This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, other holders. Joker Dino Walk coming to another sports catastrophe birthday boy. And the birthday boy today, April 1st, it's not such binge. I know what you're thinking. No. I'm not that way. Anyway, this guy is an icon. I remember his exploits with the New York Jets being a great offensive lineman and, and making a touchdown catch of one of the craziest Monday Nighters of all time back in the 2000 season. Of course, you know, that's Jumbo Elliott. But what I didn't know is Jumbo Elliott actually played for the cross town rival New York Jet Giants. I'm like, what? He was a New York Giant? And allegedly he was a New York Giant longer than he was a New York Jet. I'm like, what? Here's the funny thing about Jumbo Elliott. He was a, he was a great player and all that. So Jumbo Elliott is now 58 years old. So Jumbo Elliott was born in Lake Ronkonkoma, New York, which is home to the great Eddie Geik of Boucher Underground podcast fame. Anyway, enough about that. So anyway, Jumbo Elliott played high school on Long Island and, you know, he was a legend. And then he went to the University of Michigan in 1983 while well, he was 18. So he went to the University of Michigan. He was 6'7", 280-pound freshman. He would play offensive tackle for Bo Schoenblechler in the Michigan Wolverines from 84 to 87. He was a four-year starter. He started pretty much every game. He helped Michigan do well in the 85 season, almost becoming the number one nation. They were actually the number two team in the nation in the 85 season. He was known for his pancake blocks. I don't know much about pancake blocks, but the thing, but the um, thing is that a pancake block is a, an effective block when the player being blocked is pushed onto the ground by a blocker, flattening the opposing defender into a pancake. Okay, whatever. Anyway, so Jumbo Elliott was good for Michigan and all that. So the Giants took him in the second round of the 1988 NFL Draft. So the Giants were like, we know what we're doing. And took Elliott. Elliott would actually be the first tackle taken in the 1988 NFL Draft. So, yeah, so he went second round, 36 overall to the Giants. And with the Giants, he spent eight years with them, playing in 112 games, and was basically the left tackle. Unfortunately for Jumbo, he actually got hurt in the middle of that famous 1990 season for eight games. But fortunately, though, he was back in the lineup and the New York Giants made their push and shocked the Niners in the NFC title game as the, Giants, as the Niners were going for a three-peat and then basically beat the Bills in Super Bowl 25 thanks to Wide Wright. Jumbo Elliott did pretty well because his offensive line talents against Bruce Smith had, had the Giants run for 172 yards and basically Otis Anderson was the hero. You know, it was... He was one of the most unnoticed keys to the Giants winning the Super Bowl for the 1990 season. So yeah, so he was all mad in honors twice. He actually could have played in the Pro Bowl, but he got hurt. So yeah, the Giants were looking pretty good. But then he became a free agent and signed with the Crosstown Rival New York Jets for a five-year deal. It was like, Schrader, Judas? I don't know. But anyway, he would play 85 games for the Jets, becoming the starting left tackle for the Jets. And, you know, in his first year, he was he was a good player for a crappy team. I mean, the Jets were 1-15 that year, but they turned it around and within a few years got to the AFC title game. Of course, you can't talk about Joe Elliott without talking about the play of Monday Night Football, October 23, 2000, one of the greatest Monday Night Football. I think it's the greatest Monday Night Football comeback of all time. Dolphins, Jets, and that's not forget. Arnold Schwarzenegger is saying, Wayne Corbett's going to be a hero. You'll see. The Dolphins must be terminated. And then Jumbo Elliott. With the Jets down by seven, 
Elliott, who was an eligible receiver as an offensive tackle, somehow caught the ball in the end zone, back in the end zone, and almost dropped it. But he got it. Touchdown. Tied the game at 37. And the Jets did score the overtime field goal to win the game, and it was a 23-point comeback. He was released by the Jets in July 2001 and never and didn't play for them during that 2001 season. However, the Jets signed him and he played all 16 games in 2002. He wasn't a starter, but he played in it. So in 14 seasons, he was the left tackle 156 out of 197 games, but he was basically the left tackle of the Giants Jets franchise. And it's like, he is one of the greatest players who played for the Jets and the Giants. So, it was like, Amazing what they could do. And there were twenty seven there were twenty seven key players who played for the Giants and the Jets. So that's pretty impressive. I think he played for the Giants and Jets. So yeah, there were a lot of players who played for both teams. So yeah, that was crazy how Jumbo Elliott is one of the greatest of all time to play for the Giants and the Jets. So, yeah, he did his job. He was inducted to the College Football Hall of Fame in 2020. So, yeah, I wonder if the Jets will give him some kudos. They should. I mean, it's shocking. You know, I think of Jumbo Elliott, I think of the Jets, and I think of Andy Dyke. But now I learned he was part of the Giants Super Bowl in 1990, so now I have to think of Jimmy Schmiederberg. But, you know, it is what it is. And that's all that is. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.